but spirits that were contrary to Christ. Spirits that were contrary to the Holy Spirit. They began to manifest. Father, as your son mounts the podium, as he ministers tonight, let the Spirit of Christ inside of him cause agitation in any contrary spirit Amen. that may be in anyone here. Amen. Let them be agitated so much that they will manifest and be cast out. Amen. So that everyone present here outside will receive total deliverance. Amen. Receive fresh grace, receive fresh unction, receive fresh anointing. That none of us will go back the way we came. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And so with Jesus' joy, I want to present to us and invite the man of God, Pastor Peter Akalamudu, the Assistant Continental Overseer, Continent One. You are welcome, sir. We are ready for you, sir. We are ready for you, sir. We are ready for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Time, time, time. Amen. Amen. Once again, I want to welcome every one of us to the last edition of this meeting. That's the last session of this meeting. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, our hope and our strength, our maker and our sufficiency, our everything both great and small. Today we have gathered that your name alone may be glorified, that the scripture may be fulfilled. It is written unto the Lord shall the garden of the people be. We have gathered that in this very day, let your name be glorified in our midst, in our lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. Grant me utterance, O Lord, that I may speak your mind, that at the end we may become a blessing in your hands instrument of blessing to the congregation and to everybody that will come in contact with in Jesus' name. Amen. Do something new. Amen. Something fresh. Amen. Something gracious. Amen. Something uncommon. Amen. That the world may know that we are being with you. Amen. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me sit there. God bless you. I will be speaking on the topic, Destiny Mail. Destiny Mail. Amen. Hallelujah. Destiny Mail. So that you will remember that uh, today is 20 what? 24 of uh, March. 2024, we had a joint program and it was titled Destiny Mail. Mail. M E A L. Hallelujah. My Bible test is taken from 1 Corinthians 11 23 to 34. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 34. Amen. That already I know we have read. We have not read that one. Okay. Can we read it? Can somebody read that for us? No, somebody. One person. With the microphone, oh. Praise the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which was betrayed, took bread. 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, 
which I broke for you, these do in remembrance of me. 25. After this manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. 27. Wherefore, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. 30. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. 33. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. 34. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and that the rest will I set in order when I come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. There come a time in a man's life when he takes a meal that utter his life. Heaven recognizes that the meal that we eat has an impact, both spiritual and physical. You may say it is only physical, but I can tell you that it has a spiritual impact. So we will run through the scriptures to show the importance of what we are about to do tonight. In Genesis chapter 3, from verse 1 to 24, Genesis chapter 3, we we'll read Genesis chapter 3 from 1 to 24, we see Adam and Eve, their destiny being changed by reason of the meal they took. And when God said to Adam and Eve not to eat of the fruit of the garden, and the Bible said that God ask them to eat every other fruit, but for this particular one, the tree of life, they should not touch it. The Bible says they went and they ate it, and that brought calamity to mankind. It was a meal that one can easily pluck a mango and eat. But they took of this fruit, and their destiny changed for the worst. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. We see Noah and his sons. In Genesis chapter 9, 20 to 29, the Bible says that after the ark has, has rested and they have gone into a little farming, the first fruit of the land, they ate of it, and Noah brewed beer out of it and drank. And after that, Noah became drunk and Noah cursed his son. It was a destiny meal that day. There are meals that you will eat and it will alter your destiny for the better. 
There are meals that you will eat that will alter your destiny for the worse. May you not eat any meal that will alter your destiny for the worse in Jesus' name. Amen. In Genesis chapter 18, 1 to 14, Genesis chapter 18, 1 to 14, we see Abraham and God share meal together. After Abraham have tarried for the promises of God for this while, and the promises we are looking as if they will not be fulfilled. Bible says one cool evening, God came visiting. And Abraham sensed in his spirit that this must be God visiting. And Abraham hurriedly prepared a meal that evening for them. And after God has eaten, God began to prophesy to Abraham. The almighty God himself took a meal and began to prophesy. You can see that meal has a very great impact in the life of someone if it is wrongly taken. And the prophecy of God that have been hanging for all these years, that day, after God ate, God began to speak concerning Abraham and his wife. That it will come to pass that your wife will conceive and bring forth. And the Bible says, and Sarah, hearing that conversation, laughed and said, this man is already overwhelmed with the food we have cooked. Many destinies have been destroyed through food. But whatever food has done in your life that have made enough to fulfill God's purpose tonight, as we take the Lord's meal, God will utter it in Jesus' name. Amen. In Genesis chapter 25, 28 to 34, Genesis 25, 28 to 34, we see Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. How Jacob took advantage of Esau over a meal. Esau came back from hunting and fell famished and saw Jacob preparing the porridge and decided that he needed to eat urgently and asked his junior brother to help him. And junior brother said, in exchange for your birthright. And he said, what does a best right matter? Give me food. So he sold his best right for a porridge, a plate of porridge. And the Bible said that his destiny changed. May your destiny not be so changed by any food you eat in Jesus' name. The Bible says he sought for his Bet right with tears, but it was not possible. In Genesis chapter 27, verse 1 to 41, Genesis 27, verse 1 to 41, we see Isaac and Esau. Isaac said to Esau, I'm about to go the way that my fathers have gone. Prepare me food with a bush meat. And I will bless you. The Bible said that Jacob and the mother conspire to exchange Esau's food with the mother's food. And when Isaac has eaten the food, he poured his heart out on Jacob. And when Esau came with his food, it was too late. The Bible says he wept, saying to his father, Is there nothing at all for me? And the father said, I have blessed him. I cannot undone it. For the food was the covenant that sealed that meeting. If you must return or recall the blessing, 
he must vomit the food Be, as it was before he ate it. And since it is not possible, it has to let go. May God have mercy on us. Amen. I'm talking about destiny meal. I'm talking about how destiny of men have been truncated by food that someone ate. It is not every food you must eat. It is not every food that you must eat. Tonight is not the night to share much just because of time. I could have told us stories. Exodus chapter 12, 1 to 14. Exodus chapter 12, 1 to 14. And equally, Exodus chapter 12, 28 to 36. We see here the mystery of the Passover meal. How God destroyed Egypt through a meal. God said to Moses, as each household to prepare a meal of a sheep or a goat, of the sizable one that they will roast and they will eat it as a meal that night for it shall be called the Passover meal and after that they should put the blood of that animal on their lintel and then when he will pass over any door that does not have that mark of the blood that home shall suffer casualty. If Pharaoh have heard that story and operated in that like manner, it could have been difficult for the angel of death to visit them. Almighty Pharaoh was destroyed through meal that some people ate in their quarter. <laughs> Passover meal. They ate the meal and Israel got their freedom. Once again, it is not every meal you must eat. It is not every meal that you must what? Eat. As Africans, we educate our children not to eat outside their mother's pot. Every home. Because we know the implication of it. Even when children are given sweet or toffee or whatever, biscuits, the children are educated to first of all show it to their parents or to their mother in particular before they eat it. Many children have been have been given witchcraft through food. You may say, but it is just a small thing. My father told us that his only brother died through food. They went to the farm, came back, the mother went to the kitchen to cook, and the neighbor came with a porridge of yam and beans. And my father said to the mother, you said we should not eat anybody's food. And, my mother, and the mother said, don't worry, let him eat. And the boy ate that food and died that night. That was a strong lesson for my father. And he told us never, never to eat any food that he has not approved of. In short, he told us that there is no oracle that can reverse a food that be eaten to the tummy. We have had testimony of how some somebody got married on the day of the marriage, the mother-in-law gave the person bread 
as they eat. And the young lady, out of joy, ate the bread and her womb was blocked. When you go to occasion, you don't see senior people eat in that occasion. If they must eat, their food is guided. No matter how you serve in a dinner organized by the president, you can't see him eat there. In short, <laughs> his food is guided. <laughs> because they know the implication. I watch a particular uh, program where a particular head of state ordered for water to drink. And the water was brought and he turned it down because it was not his son that gave him the water. He told them no. So they returned the water back to the son. Even though the person that gave the water to the head of state was a, it was a member of the family. But the head of state turned it down. It was when his son brought it that he drank the water. Because this, at this time, he was confident that the water has gone through all the security check. Beloved, we cannot be careless as children of God to eat anything that comes our way. Tonight, we are about to take a destiny meal, a meal that would turn around every other meal that we have eaten that become a poison in our system. Amen. Say better, amen. amen. Israel had their breakthrough through a destiny meal. That night, some people might have grumbled and said, what is the meaning of this one? What about rituals is this one again? And after they ate that meal, Israel became like a slave. I mean, Egypt became like slaves to Israelites. And they gave them, not a few, everything they asked of them. The Bible says the economy of Egypt collapsed after Israel left because they took so much gold and silver and diamond from them. Tonight, I'm trusting God for somebody here. And when the meal prepared by God comes in contact with you, every other meal, whether it was given to you in the dream, like some eat in the dream, or given to you in the physical, to undermine your destiny shall be reversed. Amen. Shall be reversed. Amen. Shall be reversed. Amen. In Jesus' name. In 1 Kings chapter 17, 8 to 24, 1 Kings 17, 8 to 24, we have the testimony of the widow of Zarephath and Elijah. Destiny meal. It was after Elijah ate that meal that Elijah began to prophesy to the woman that as long as the famine stayed, everybody may not have food, but you will have more than enough. Amen. The widow shared her meal with Elijah under the instruction of God. And that changed the testimony, the destiny of a people that we are bound to die. For the woman said, I am my son, have only this a few to eat and die. But after they shared the meal together, the Bible said that death translated into life. Tonight, as we eat and drink the bread and the cup of the Lord, may there be a change, a positive change that will turn around 
covenants that are hidden from you. Amen. Foundation that we are laid when we are not yet born. Amen. That have been speaking against you. Amen. That have been battling with you. Amen. Tonight, they shall be neutralized. Amen. They shall be neutralized. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. In 2 Kings chapter 4. 8 to 17. Second Kings chapter 4, 8 to 17. There's a story of the Shunammite woman and Elisha. The Bible said, And the woman prepared a place for the man of God and equally fed the man of God with food. And after the man of God had eaten, he said to his boy, What can we do for this woman? And after interrogating the woman and this his boy, they found out that the woman needed a son or a child. By that encounter or sharing meal together, the Bible said that woman became pregnant and had a son. I am praying for somebody tonight that your destiny will have a meaning. After tonight, Holy Communion, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take this meeting very serious. Because we may have a series of them, but this one is a particular one. It's a destiny meal. It's a meal that will alter the destiny of men. I'm trusting God for you tonight. Amen. The Bible says in Luke chapter 24, 13 to 33. Luke 24, 13 to 33. The vision of two disciples of Jesus were restored after they have had a meal with Jesus at Emmaus. The Bible says that they traveled along the road, and he was discussing about the death of Jesus. And Jesus joined himself with them, for them not knowing that it was Jesus. And they began to recount what, was, what has happened. And Jesus said, what are you doing? And they were saying, and he, they said, are you a stranger in this land of this notable thing that has happened? And the Bible said that Jesus make an attempt when the night has come to continue his journey. And they bid on him to join them, to stay, to tarry, because the road was not safe. And the Bible said, Jesus tarried with them, and they brought bread and fish. And as the hand of Jesus touched it and break it, and gave them, and they ate, their eyes opened, and they saw that it was Jesus. And Jesus vanished from their midst. I am trusting God for somebody that your vision will be Enlighten. Whether I'm physical vision or spiritual vision. There are some things that are happening around you that you are blind to. After this destiny meal, your eyes will be open. And you'll be able to know where the problem is. In Jesus' name. Beloved, tonight's meal is a very special meal. When the time comes for us to pray, I want you to take it serious. You will recall that in John chapter 21, as I bring the meeting to a close, the message to a close rather, John chapter 21, 1 to 22. John 21, 1 to 22. Bible says, after the death of Jesus, the disciples went out to fish. And Jesus came visiting. And after Jesus had had an encounter with them, they had a, a meal together and their eyes were open. Their eyes were not just open, but they were restored back to destiny. Because Jesus had a plan for their lives as fishers of men. But they abandoned their destiny 
and went for something different. But when they had a meal with Jesus, their destiny was restored and they had an encounter with their genuine destiny for them. I'm trusting God for somebody. The wilderness journey will end today. The wilderness journey will end today. The wilderness journey will end today. After this meal, the wilderness journey will end today. Say better, amen. amen. You recall that in John chapter 13, 21 to 30, John chapter 13, 21 to 30, there is a pathetic story here. The Bible says, the night before Jesus was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and the wine. And after he has blessed it, he communicated to them. That night, Peter that has disappointed Jesus severally, that Jesus said, I have prayed for you, for Satan desire to take you. The Bible said, after that meal, Peter was restored. But Judas, the scarlet, fell from faith. I am trusting God for you tonight that this meal will not end your destiny. Amen. Please say better, amen. amen. That this meal will not end your destiny. Amen. That this meal will mark the beginning of the beginning of greater height. The beginning of prosperity, Amen. of sound head and sound mind. Amen. The beginning of greatness. Amen. The beginning of the announcement of your person. Amen. The beginning of the, the manifestation of the glory of God in your life. Amen. If you believe that, shout a better Amen. Amen. We began by reading. First Corinthians eleven twenty three to twenty to thirty four, giving us the outline the, under the premise that we should take the communion, which is a destiny meal. It was not instituted for form; it was instituted for purpose. He said, "Do this in remembrance of me." Do this in remembrance of me. There is no time to go into the detail of that language. But I will just gloss through it. When Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, he was bringing to our notice what he did on the cross of Calvary for you and me. See, so anytime you take the communion, you bring to remembrance what I did on the cross of Calvary. How I led captivity captive. How I reversed the handwriting of ordinances that were written against you. How I blotted them out of the way that you may have access to my person. Not only access to my person, but that you might be complete in me. I'm speaking from Colossians now. Beloved, that was what Jesus was saying. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So anytime you do this, in you do this, in remember, anytime you take the Holy Communion, you bring to the fore the battle that Jesus fought for us on the cross of Calvary. How he won principalities and power. How he led them captive. How he triumphed over Satan. He said, when you eat the bread and you drink the wine, which is my blood, you are bringing to fall what I establish. It was a permanent establishment. It is not something that is casual. It was a permanent act. In other words, the victory that Jesus gave us is a permanent victory. And at any time you take the communion, 
you bring to your own remembrance what Jesus did for us. You exact that position of Jesus over your life. That is what is communion symbolizes. How he left captivity captive. How he made a public show of them openly, triumphing over them. How he blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that we are written against us, that we are contrary to us. Jesus said, you are bringing them to remembrance, the things that I have done for you, so that you may not forget to continue to be in captivity. He said, the communion is a reminder of what I have done. Am I communicating to somebody here? Yes, you know, during the Independence Day, one of the last symbols of the president is for them to open the box for the pigeon to, to be asked to come out as a symbol of peace and freedom. Well, because the pigeon have been caged there for this while, even when the doors are open, they doubt whether these people are sincere. So the president is giving a stick to push them out. That you are free now, you can go. Jesus is saying that when you take the communion, remember that, remember your freedom. Remember what happened on the cross of Calvary, even though it was 2,000 years ago. The communion is that symbol, is that, it is that image, it is that reminder that you are a free person. And that powers of darkness have no power over you. That is the symbol of the communion. It is not aggregation of believers to eat bread and drink wine. No. It goes beyond that. One day we will speak just on do this in remembrance of me. And we will unearth the secret behind it. But for the purpose of time, we've just given you that. So tonight, I want you to have this at the back of your mind. Everything that is a contradiction to what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, tonight, you will abolish it. Tonight, you will challenge it. There are foundations that are going to be altered. Though you don't know that there are foundations you are standing upon that are faulty, but at the eating of this communion, the spirit behind the communion, that spirit that quickened Jesus from the dead, and led captivity captive, and made a public show of them openly, that same spirit will utter every strength foundation that hitherto the fathers have entered into in time past, that the enemy is standing upon as authority to challenge every move we make in life. Say, say then, say they're born again. We'll go see. Tonight, they will be judged. Amen. Every stranger in your life will be judged. Amen. Because there are people that have been appointed as monitoring spirits, witches and wizards, within the church and outside the church, who monitor your activities, who look to see to it that they enforce the ordinance of old, which Jesus abolished. But in your ignorance, they are taking advantage of you. But by the communion tonight, they shall be abolished. Amen. Can we rise? The Bible says, let every man examine himself. Let every man examine himself. Let every man examine himself. I want you to talk to God. I want you to talk to God. Is that, is that all? Okay. The Bible said, in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I'm reading from Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. Say, in Christ Jesus dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 
Verse 10 says, And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and what? Power. So when you are going to pray tonight, pray with knowledge. <laughs> Understanding that you are a joint head with Christ over all principalities and what? Powers. The ones that have threatened you in your dream, the ones that have threatened you in the village, the ones that have threatened you inside the church, without the knowledge of the leadership of the church, tonight they shall be dealt with. In verse 14, he says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and power, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. I want you to talk to God. Say, you should examine yourself so that you may not be judged. So that the meal will not fight you. Instead of fighting for you. There is no gentleman in jungle. Those of us from Niger Delta, we know this language. Say, there is no gentleman when he, in the jungle. <laughs> we, are now, we are now in the jungle. <laughs> so, don't don't pray Nyanga prayer. This is about your destiny. Don't bother about your neighbor listening to your prayer points. Amen? As he's listening to your prayer point, they will listen to your testimony also. So I want you to talk to God. I want you to talk to God. I want you to talk to God. Is there anywhere that if I take this communion, I'll be walking against myself? Let the blood of Jesus speak for you. For the blood of Jesus cleans us from every unrighteousness. Let the blood of Jesus speak for us. Talk to God. Present yourself to God. Is there anywhere there is spot, wrinkle, blemish? Anything that will not allow you to drink or eat of the bread? Talk to God over it. It is a personal thing. It is a personal thing. You can't afford to err tonight. No more error. The spirit of error is cast out. Open your mouth and talk to God. If you cannot speak English, speak in your local language. For God understands all languages. Let every man examine himself. 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 Genuinely go to God and say, Daddy, see me, oh, I don't come. See me oh, with this potter potter for my body. Have mercy upon me. Wash me, oh. Cleanse me, Father. Don't allow me go empty handed. Don't allow me. Don't allow me. Don't allow me, Jesus, to go empty handed. Don't allow me. Yes, my Lord. Don't allow me, Jesus, to go
My father, my father, by the blood, I come. Cleanse me, O Lord. Purge me, O Lord, of any spot, of any blemish, of any wrinkle, and everything and anything that will stop me from benefiting from this communion. I repent of it, Lord. Have mercy upon me. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Libora para pasata. Linkuma libra casata pasoto. Those of us outside pray. Those of us in the gallery pray. Those of us on the floor pray. Security pray. Those overseeing the cars, pray. This is your day. This is your day. It is a destiny meal. A meal that you will live never to forget. A meal that you will live never to regret. A meal that you will live to say, God, thank you. I was part of this meal. A meal, a meal, a meal is a destiny changing meal. A meal that will bring you to the fall in the fulfillment of God's plan and purpose for your life. Tonight is a night. The heavens are open. The heavens are open to hear your voice. Speak unto the Lord's ear. For his ears are open. For his ears are open. Lima soto pora pasata. Lingre bro soto poshata papa. Lima Santo por amanti li broca paca sate. Holy Ghost, behold your people, behold your people. Let none of us go empty handed, Lord. Let us not eat this meal to damnation. We come through the veil of the blood of Jesus, knowing the impact and the import of this meal. Have mercy upon every one of us and the house where we represent. Have mercy upon us tonight. Let us eat this meal to your glory and to your honor. Let this meal change our destiny for better and for the best. Let your excellency prevail 
as we take this meal. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the bread, I know it has been prayed over. It has not been prayed over. But they have been stationed. The breasts have been stationed. Father, I use this bread as a point of contact and this wine as a point of contact to reach all the bread and the wine that have been stationed in the congregation for the purpose of administering it to your people. Let your power rest upon them. Amen. Let the bread become your flesh. Let the wine become your blood. Amen. And as we eat it that day, let it become a destiny meal. Amen. A meal that will alter everything that works contrary to your purpose of our life. Amen. A meal that will bring us to the fore. A meal that will announce us Amen. of your glory and of your honor. Amen. This and more I decree in Jesus' name. Amen. Let this meal break every yoke destroy every work of darkness Amen. as we eat it, Lord. Amen. Let our eyes open. Amen. Let our ears open Amen. to behold you and to hear from you Amen. more than ever before. Amen. Let this may launch us into our destiny Amen. in fulfillment of your purpose of our lives. Amen. This we decree Amen. in the name of the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we serve them now? In the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and said, Can we sit down? Let's be seated as we have been served. This is my body. We are the pastor serving. Broken for you. What about the other people? And as you eat it, remember me. This is my body, broken for you. And as you
Is there anyone that have not been served bread? Just wave your hand if you have not been served bread. Pastor, I told you. But can the pastors take bread upstairs? Is there anyone that have not been served wine? Those of us outside, cameraman, can you pick them if you can pick them? Can we take more bread upstairs so that we can save time? If you have been served bread, shout a big hallelujah. If you have not been served bread, shout a big hallelujah. The night, those of us that have already eaten our bread, don't trouble yourself, don't worry. We want to fulfill our righteousness. The night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And he break it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat in remembrance of me. At the same time, he took the wine. And after he has supped, Seeing this cup, this is my blood reshared for you. Drink it in remembrance of me. We shall all drink together in the name of the Father. Amen. And of the Son. And of, of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's begin to talk to God. Let's begin to thank Him. Let's begin to appreciate Him. Daddy, thank you. 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 Daddy, 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 thank you. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for the privilege to partake of your body we thank you daddy thank you Jesus in Jesus name we pray we have some prayer points to carry out before we take the offering can we all rise up? The night that Israel took the mail, the Bible said they stood to take the mail, and from that day they entered into their liberty.
Prayer number one. See, it is written. Strangers shall be driven out of their hiding places. Therefore, by reason of this communion, every stranger in my life, Father, drive them out. Talk to God. 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 Open your mouth. Every stranger, every stranger, every stranger, as it is written, that which is written is written. Every stranger, strangers shall be driven out of their hidden places by this communion, by this communion, by this communion. Every stranger in my life, oh Lord. Every stranger in my life, oh Lord. Send them packing. Send them packing. Strangers in the name of poverty. Strangers in the name of sickness or diseases. Strangers in the name of causes. Father, send them packing. Send them back in. There is no hiding place for strangers. Every stranger shall be driven from their hiding places. Every stranger in my life, oh Lord, in the life of my household, I stand as the oracle of God. Every stranger in my marriage, every stranger in my home, every stranger in my business. In my businesses, every stranger in my academy, every stranger in my profession, every stranger in my business, in my place of work, in anything that has to do with me, by this communion, by this communion, high degree, be driven out, 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 in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Say better, amen. amen. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. It is written. Any plan my father did not plant amen. shall be uprooted. Therefore, by this communion, I command every strange plant planted in my life whether in the physical or in the spiritual I command them to be uprooted now now uprooted 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 every plant that is not planted by Jesus in my life that is not planted by the Holy Ghost that is not planted by Father, by God the Father. They shall be uprooted. They shall be uprooted. We command them now to be uprooted. Holy Ghost. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God, sister. Open your mouth. Any plant that the enemy has planted, the Bible said, "Why men slept? The enemy planted there. They went to plant wheat in the life of people. One man we are sleeping. Any plant, any plant that my father did not plant, they stand uprooted now. What are in the realm of the spirit? What are in the physical?" In whatever level they planted it, by reason of this communion, we command them uprooted. Uprooted completely and totally in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Say a better amen. amen. It is written. To my father, my father. It is written. Affliction shall not come the second time. Every form of affliction that the enemy has laid upon me. He that told before today and hereafter because of this communion we decree I decree no more affliction no more affliction talk to God no more affliction affliction shall not come the second time affliction shall not come the second time everybody pray 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 no more affliction in your marriage, in your business, in your career, in your ministry, in your parishes, in your churches, in your life, life of your wife and children, life of your husband and children, among your siblings, your father's house, wherever the enemy has raised up an affliction, no more affliction, no more affliction, return to sender, return to sender, return to sender, return to sender. By the power in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, my father, my father. It is written. Costless cost shall not come. Costless cost shall not come. By reason of this communion, we cancel every cost. Every cost. For Jesus became a cost that I may be free. For it is written, He that hung upon the tree is cost. Jesus hung upon the tree that I may not be cost. Therefore, no more cause. All cause shall be costless by reason of this communion. Talk to God. Talk to God. Every cause, every cause, whether by our central power, our central spirit, parental covenant, whatever is the nature of cause or causes, whether personal causes or whatever the causes are, covenants of any form, my father, my father. By reason of the communion, we nullify them. We nullify them completely and totally from their foundation. We made them of no effect. They shall no longer speak against us in any form, in any manner, in any fora, in any medium. No more costs. No more costs. No more costs. All causes are now costless in the name of Jesus. Yes, my father. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, my father, my father. It is written. Jesus wept. That I weep no more. From today, by reason of this communion, no more sorrow, no more weeping in my life, in my home, over my business, over my children, over my husband, over my wife, over my father's house, over my parishes. Talk to God, talk to God. No more weeping. Jesus wept that I weep no more. Holy Ghost! Jesus wept that I weep no more. Jesus wept that I weep no more. Jesus wept that I weep no more. By this communion, I weep no more. I weep no more. No more sorrow. No more weeping over my finances. Over the works of my hands, over my children, over my wife, over my husband, over my household, over my father's house, over my siblings, 
over everything about me, my father, my God, over the church of coming to my care, the ministry, the business, the career, my going out, my coming in, my God, my father, no more will be, no more will be. From today, we be stop, we be stop, we be stop, we be stop. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray two more prayer points say my father my father it is written the night the Lord left Abraham you visited Abraham every Lord whether spiritual Lord or physical Lord in my life in my business in my going and I'm coming in by this communion, I separate myself from that. I separate myself from that. Nah, every lot go, 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 every lot go. Holy Ghost, the hour of your visitation has come. Holy Spirit, the hour of your visitation has come. Let every lot in my life, every lot in my home, every lot in my business, every lot in my career, every lot in my ministry, every lot in my church, my God, my Father, in my Father's house, in the midst of my people, around me, O oh Lord, by this communion, I separate myself. I separate myself. I separate myself. I separate myself from every lot. Whether they be spiritual lot or physical lot. Whatever lot they are. I separate myself. I separate myself. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, my father, my father, in the place of labor, let me find favor. By this communion, let me find favor. In the place of labor, talk to God. Talk to God. From today, let me find favor. In the place of labor, let me find favor in the place of labor. In my going out, in my coming in, let me find favor. Favor, favor, favor in the morning, favor in the noon, favor in the night, favor in the evening. All round favor in the place of labor. Let me find favor. Let favor speak for me, O oh Lord. Let that, let, let that favor speak for me, O oh Lord. Holy Ghost. Lengere bobo shatala bakasa. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Power, power, beyond the sky. Power, power, beyond the sky. Power, power, beyond the sky. Oh, power, power, beyond the sky.
Let somebody shout the big hallelujah. We will shift all that administration to we take the anointing service so that we may save time. Amen. Amen. But I can tell you the foundations are changing places. Amen. God is repairing foundations. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so, Father, I want to thank you for the life of your children. In this first segment that we have entered, that we have just finished, my God and my Father, even as we wait to enter into the second segment, let your work of redemption begin to manifest. Let that which you did on the cross of Calvary begin to manifest. Reach out to every family that is here, everyone that have part partake of this communion let none of us go home empty handed Amen. search us out Amen. for we wait for your glory upon our lives Amen. let your glory descend upon our midst and let your name alone be glorified Amen. thank you as we move to the second segment in Jesus precious name we pray Amen. and let the people of God shout a big Amen It is time to take our offering so that after the offering we'll go into the second segment. I want you to be in the spirit. Amen. Let me sit there. I want us to be in the spirit. Bring out a quality offering. I don't think we are going to take another offering again. Okay, there will be Thanksgiving offering. I will take Thanksgiving offering, sir. Yes, after the anointing service. To say thank you to Jesus. That does not mean you should divide the offering to two. <laughs> 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 okay let's lift up our offering right on your seat lift up your offering you don't need to stand up you can be seated just lift it up say my father my father, my father, my father. this is my offering the offering of my deliverance. My offering of my prosperity. That that which you have done tonight in my life, I seal it with this offering. Let it be permanent. I will yet return, O Lord, to share my testimony. Let this offering be my witness. In Jesus' name. Amen. All the days of my never praise you. Everything that I have now, you give to me, Baba. We can stand up and dance now. Lord, I say for your Once love. Once you give your offering, you can stand up and dance. Just see you love the plenty you give to die for me. Jehovah Shabu. Jehovah DC. I am the I am. My great provider. Access to there's no one else like you, the Lion of Judah. You're the mighty man in battle. I am. He has given us victory. Oh my God, has given us victory. He has given us victory. Lord, I say 
for your love I'm grateful. Just see you love me plenty, you can see that. You say Jehovah. Somebody shout the big Let me see that God bless you. We are flowing into the second segment now. Joel chapter 2, 26 to 29. Joel chapter 2. 26 to 29. My sister, can you help us? Jewel, Jewel. Uh, chapter 2. Verse 26, and it says 26 to 29. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord, your God, that I dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. And you shall know that I am the means of Israel, Amen. and that I am the Lord your God, Amen. and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also, upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. And that will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Verse 30. No, 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 no. 29. Praise the Lord. The prophecy of Joel has come to pass. It has been fulfilled in our time and in our generation. I have come to discover 
that all men that did exploit in the name of the Lord were men that carried his presence. His oil was upon their life, and by that oil, grace was released upon them. And they did everything under the unction of that grace, and they achieved so much. A life without the grace of God is a life of struggle. For the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 16, John chapter 1 verse 16, it said, for we all have received what? Grace. For grace. When God created man, the Bible gave us an account of how God put his spirit in that man. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, God imparted man with his spirit. A man became a living soul. And through that, man was able to do exploits. No wonder Adam was able to name everything that came his way. Adam was a professor of professors by reason of the Spirit of God that was upon his life. I am persuaded tonight that when you shall receive the oil upon your life, the oil will speak in your favor. Yeah. For the oil of God has a voice. And that voice of that oil shall speak for you. Yeah. David said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And my cup, or rather my horn, shall doubt exalt that the horn of the unicorn. Beloved, I want us to understand that the place of the oil is not an error. All the men that did great exploits for God were men that were imparted by the oil of God. Moses encountered God when he ran for his dear life. And from that day, the life of Moses never remained the same. In short, God give account of Moses of that impartation. He said, Moses is a man that I speak to face to face. He said, Moses is a man, is the meekest man that I have ever created on earth. Moses had a large heart for the things that he suffered. He accommodated them all because of the oil. And then when Moses was leaving, God said, Put upon Joshua some portion of the oil that I have put on you. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 27, verse 18, Numbers 27, verse 18, and Deuteronomy 34, verse 9, Joshua was imparted. And when Joshua received that impartation, his life changed. I am trusting God for somebody here that tonight, God will impart you Amen. with his presence Amen. and your life will never remain the same. Amen. You know when Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that we should, verse 31 that we should covet earnestly the best gift he listed a lot of gifts there but when I read Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Then I knew the gift that I needed of God. Before then, I was praying those gifts and they were manifesting. But when I got to Acts 38, verse 8, verse, I mean, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, then I knew the gift that I needed. The Bible says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. The greatest gift is to have God with you. When God is with you, that is the greatest gift. That is everything. I remember in one of the open heaven, our daddy was saying that he went to see Kenneth Hagin and when he had the opportunity to meet him one-on-one, -on -one, 
The dad is asking, what will you want me to do for a young man? And he said, everything that you carry, that's in you. While others were asking for cassette books and magazine, he said he needed the anointing that was upon Papa Hagen. And the old man said, take a seat. Let me attend to everybody. I will come back to you. He said, when he finished with them, he came back to him. He said, come. Need and let me pray for you. And as he laid his two hands, he said, he just saw the two hands coming to him. And he went flat on the floor. And the next thing he saw was that his hand was upon him on the floor and was speaking in tongues. He poured everything that he had inside him. He said, when he left that camp meeting, he knew that he has encountered grace. Beloved, I'm trusting God for you tonight that you will encounter grace. But there's something that you must have at the back of your mind. I shared it yesterday. Jesus himself said it in John chapter 7, 37, 38, and 39. The opening word there was on that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus cried out and said, is there anyone that tests? You can't carry the anointing without a test for it. That is the truth. And in short, let me say this. There is nothing that you can receive if you don't hunger for it. Until you hunger for a thing, you can't have it. Why? Because you won't put a premium on it. You won't value it. And heaven will want to prove you whether you actually need it or not. Tonight, you will prove to heaven whether the oil you are coming to receive on your head is a casual one or something that is an impartation. I told us here in the passing how I cried night and day asking God to give me what was upon our Father in the Lord. And 2003 at the Grasshopper Stadium at Uwiri, I had that encounter. And after that encounter, I knew that something has happened. Amen? Amen. I had another second encounter at the camp. One of the Holy Ghost men when he said, Oh, my provincial pastor, come out. For the fire upon me is too much. The Lord should distribute it. And as we came out and lined up, all that I saw, I saw his hand coming to me and I began to speak in tongues. I knew that that day it was a renewal. Tonight I'm trusting God for somebody. Do you know that the birth of Jesus was by the anointing? Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. Talk about how Jesus was imparted by the Holy Ghost. The birth of Jesus was by impartation. For the angel said to Mary, The glory of God shall overshadow you, and thou shalt conceive and bring forth his son. And his name shall be called Jesus. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we see an impartation for witnessing. I'm trusting God that somebody will have an impartation. But you must make up your mind. What do you need this impartation for? The end product of this impartation is to glorify Jesus. Is to magnify Jesus. If it's for just showmanship, beloved, <laughs> it will just be an ordinary ororo on your head. But if indeed and in truth, it's for witnessing. It's to draw men unto God. It's to be an ambassador of the Most High. To be an example to the brethren that I can assure you that you will have it tonight. Amen. No one can deny you. Amen. So you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon thee. 
And he shall be a witness unto me. In your local assembly, in your Jerusalem, in your Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. In Acts chapter 2, 1 to 4, Acts chapter 2, 1 to 4, we see the impartation of the disciples. When Jesus said to them, Tarry ye at the upper room until thou hast received unction from on high. I was sharing with us here also, last year, I think, or last, uh, some few months ago, how I went to Israel on a free ticket of the Bauchi State Government. Myself and the, the regional pastor for Deeper Life. I was in my office when the, the Pamsek government house came to see me and said the governor would like to meet with me. So I went with him and the governor told me, it was Isaiah Guida's time. He said to me, Pastor, we have crisis in this state. I want somebody that will preach peace. And you have been recommended to us. Can you preach peace? I said, how do you want me to preach it? He said, we will open up the television for you and the radio station. And you will go down and preach for 30 minutes. So people will listen to you so that they will know that we need peace. I said, when? He said, when you are ready? I said, I'm ready now. <laughs> so they took me to NTA, to the Bauchi State Broadcasting Corporation, to Federal Radio Corporation, to the Bauchi State Radio Corporation, and I preached. And by the time I got to my office, there was a letter waiting for me, appointing me as one of the board of directors of the Pregnant Welfare Board. And any time I attend the board, they pay me in dollars. I went to Bauchi as a missionary. <laughs> but the grace of God found me out. Amen. And so one of the trip to Israel, as we go to the upper room, because those of us that have been to Israel, we know that there's the upper room. And when people get to Israel, many people get to Israel on this journey of experience, and all they take is pictures, 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 pictures. But right in my spirit, everywhere I enter, I wanted an encounter with Jesus. I needed the blueprint of Jesus. And as we entered into the upper room, the Holy Spirit said to me, Son, as it was in the days of Pentecost, so it is now. That the anointing that came upon the apostle is still here. Tell your people to tap into it. We are given just, I think, five minutes maximum. But we are there for more than 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Because when I announced to them what I have heard, and that they won't take pictures, but let us just worship. And as we raise up our voice to worship God, I saw the people that I was leading, all of them dropping on the floor. They dropped. Nobody lay hand on us. I was the only one standing. And they were on the floor, drunk. And the crowd were outside from other nations waiting to come in. And they were angry with us. And we enjoyed ourselves. Because when they peep in, they, see, they saw that we were drunk on the floor. And I was standing. I was speaking in tongues. That day we had an encounter. And that same oil is still there. And many have gone there without touching it. <laughs> I'm trusting God for you tonight that you will have an, an impartation. In Jesus' name. Time, time, time. Let me take my last scripture. David was a man that understood God's anointing. And he coveted it. He hunger for it. So he expressed it in Psalm 42, verse 1 to 2. Can you give me my sister? Psalm 42, 1 to 2. 
Psalm 42. Thank Praise you. Praise the Lord. Psalm 42, verse 1. As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul tasted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Amen. It boils down to what Jesus says. Is there anyone that tests? There must be a hunger for the oil. Either for, for leadership in the financial world, or leadership in political world, or leadership in, the ministry, in, 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 in ministry, or leadership in the academia. There is an oil for it. And when that oil rests upon you, it becomes obvious for everybody to know that this one carried the grace of God. So tonight, it's not just an oil for ministry. It's an oil for every other department. There is an oil for marriage. That's what the Bible calls, say that the foolish woman pluck down what? The wise one build what? There's an oil. There's an oil that follow a man that founded the wife. It's in the Bible. <laughs> so he that founded the wife obtained what? Not a woman, no. <laughs> so he that founded the wife obtained what? Favor. When the Lord told me about my wife, I went to God to ask him for one thing. I said, where is the favor? that accompany this woman you are given to me. This marriage. There are some things I have done in the closet that when I shared them with you, ask me, Pastor Peter, are you really serious? When God fixed the wedding, and I didn't have money, I went to him to ask for the money. And as I lie on the floor, Demanding for that favor as a proof that that sister was my wife. Somebody knocked at the door. And I went to the door. The man was a director with Indo, India, Indo Nigeria, Merchant Bank. He said, Pastor Peter, I've got your invitation card, but I'm going for a meeting in London and I will not be available. And gave me a check. And I opened the check, it was 500,000. <laughs> so I went back to my prayer room. I continued with my prayer. And while I was on the floor, 30 minutes time, somebody came again and knocked at the door. This time it was the MD of uh, NS Young. He came and said he was going to South Africa for a meeting. I won't be in the wedding. And gave me a check. And I opened the check as he left. It was 500000 <laughs> Do you want me to continue? <laughs> <laughs> the scriptures cannot be broken. The scriptures cannot be broken. You don't need, you need the whole of the scripture, but you need a scripture at a time to go to God to discuss it. He said, the heaven and the earth shall pass away, not a jot of my word shall go unfulfilled. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> While I was on the floor praying, somebody drove in and knocked at the door again. And when I opened the door, it was a professor of medicine, University of Lagos. He said, Pastor Peter, I'll be in the wedding, but I want to take care of the, the reception. All the catering services, leave it to me.
If I continue here, you will, you will, you will say, what is the meaning of this one? Uh, I was still on the floor. The Bible says, he that founded a wife, founded a good thing, and obtained favor. So I said, God, I want, where is the favor? You told me this lady is my wife. That's what you told me. I want the favor. I want to see the favor. Before that evening, I started in the morning before evening. Nobody told me to get up. <laughs> When a sister came to see me and said she has prayer points, I said, go and thank the Lord. <laughs> the bills have been paid. <laughs> I said, this Thanksgiving, no prayer points anymore. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Is there anyone that tests tonight? Heaven will be open to you by your tests. Can we rise? First of one day at Abba, I prayed from 12 to 10. A.M. 12 midnight to 10. I was carried away. I was soaked. And Jesus walked into the room. When I say this, people think I'm joking. And he said to me, son, I've heard your voice, but there's something extra that I want to do. Can you exchange your wedding ring with the special grace I want to give you? I said, sure. So I want to borrow your hand for creative miracles. But the, your wedding ring will become an obstacle for God. people who think that that grace is on your wedding ring. So give it to me. Take it off your hands, put it away, and never to go back to it again. But that is the agreement between me and you. I hunger for the oil in the closet. That was the only thing that made me to get up. And that weekend, a sister whose husband was sitting with me on the altar went blind, unknown to me for three months. Her servant and her father fought in the realm of the spirit. It was a husband that told me later, the girl challenged the father. And the father said, oh, so you have grown up now to challenge me in the coven. And pointed his hand at his eyes, at her eyes, and she went blind. So they hid it from me, knowing the implication of what has transpired. But when they met the fifth consultant, he said the eyes are dead. And that it can only be restored back through prayer. That was when they called me in. And the Lord said, for this purpose, I took that ring from you. Listen to me. The things of God are not cheap. There's a price. You want a political office? There's a price. A young man that had masters in political science. If you want me to mention him, I'll mention him. He was 29. He met me in church. He said, Brother Peter, I have masters in political science, but I have no job. I have no house. I just came to Lagos. And I was led to come to this church. Can you house me? So I housed him. A week after, he said, you need a job. I said, let's go and pray. As we enter into prayer, the Lord said to me, I will appoint him, I will put him in, in government, and I will demand that office from him. So I told my boss 
Then the Adetola, who was a DG in the presidency, to have him, to get him a job. He took him to Abuja and said, Cross River State, uh, no, Aqua Bomb was uh, filled up and employed him. Later he called me and said, son, can I send him to go and do PhD? I said, sure. So the young man was sent to go and do PhD. And when he came back to do his research in the International Institute of, Inter Institute of International Affairs, the library, <laughs> she had, he had an encounter with a librarian who was our member. I introduced him to the librarian. And then the chief of air staff came there to do research and was doing research on the research that young man was doing at PhD level, where he was doing his own masters. So the woman introduced him, so two of them met during the Bacha era. <laughs> I was still in Bosco Town. Listen to me carefully. He was doing his PhD. So he went to see the chief of air staff to engage him in his research that he was doing for his master's. And while they were there, one senior officer came in, took the salute, and the chief of Esther said to the young man, hey, look at this young man sitting before me. It's not your commissioner. And the man took the salute because he was his nominee to Abacha to make him governor of Akwaibo during the military era. And he took the salute and gave him his card and said, meet me in Akwaibom government house for the inauguration as a commissioner. We borrowed the money for him to take night bus. <laughs> but the truth about the matter is that the prophecy of God was unfolding itself. He got to Akwaibom and was made commissioner for education. He was the youngest. Moses S. Here. He told me that when he got, after the night boss arrived, he washed his face, looked for water, washed him, cleaned himself up, and walked to government house. His name was at the gate. He walked into the chamber and he was sworn in as commissioner for education. That is what the anointing can do. Yeah. He became commissioner for education, Akwa Ibom. And when the attorney was over, he became a assist, special assistant to the Minister for Education. Nabuja. That is what the anointing can do. The anointing is not... <laughs> you know, some of us are used to this anointing. So we think it's just meant for... It's a casual thing. No. Places that you can't enter, this anointing will open the door. Tonight, you must put a demand on the anointing. There must be a, a test. If God makes you a billionaire, can he trust you? That's a big question. Will you not say that your wife's English is not correct and you want to marry another woman? <laughs> I can continue because of time. The, the young man that that <laughs> that uh, that didn't do for <laughs> in your bank, you see, remember that young that story? <laughs> it was in millions, and you pay him every two, two weeks, but he blew it up. He came to church jobless. He approached me and said, Daddy, I need a job. And I introduced him to a family as a, son, as a house fellowship teacher. One week after, the young man gave him a card. He said, Pastor, can I give my house fellowship teacher a card? I said, Sure. I, said, I don't want to, I have enough car in my compound. He's coming to teach us and he's going home trekking. So he gave him a card. From there, the door opened. And he began to supply diesel on the high sea. And we were paying him every two, two weeks. 
The money was too much. It was mind-blowing for him. From joblessness to affluence to that amount of money. Then he divided the fund. <laughs> Let me not go that direction. <laughs> Can God trust you? <laughs> Before you say yes, sir, think. <laughs> Can God trust you? Do something you something you Something new in my life. Oh Lord, oh, oh do something new. Do something, something new in my life. Jesus, something new in my life. Oh, something new. Something new. to give you one minute to pray. What do you want the anointing for? As touching your person, it will begin with you. But it will not end with you. Because the anointing is for service. The anointing is going to open doors. There is somebody here you have not known what is called favor. But after today, you will know what is called favor. <laughs> hey. Pastor, I have a brother in Enugu, Obina. One day the Lord said to me, There's somebody here. By 10 a.m. on Monday morning, today is Sunday. By 10 a.m. on Monday morning, you have a contract of 2.8 billion. They thought I was joking. By 10 a.m., Chimaroke called him. So, Bina, where are you? He said, I'm on my bed. He said, foolish boy, what are you doing on your bed? Come and meet me in government house. He got there, and the man said, I have two investors to build. Renaissance University and Enugu State University. And I've been thinking about who will I give that contract to? And something tell me you can handle it. Obina is not an architect. Obina is not. He did fan art. But he's, he's gifted. The Bible says a man's gift. And he was given the contract 2.8 billion. And as he stepped out of the governor's office, he called me and said, Daddy, it has happened. I said, what happened? He said, the 2.8 billion has happened. Listen to me. You don't know what's called fever. You have labeled so much that it, it has become synonymous with you. I can continue and you will be, you will say, ah, is it possible in this Nigeria of, of the truth is true.
Anytime God anoints a person, he does it for himself. It's not for you to braggado around. It's for the expansion of his work. Either at the political level, either at the academia, either at the business level, or in the ministry. Wherever he anoints you as an apostle, he's doing it for his namesake. And once you can sustain that relationship, and understand the source of that oil that the oil came from God that God is your watershed you are unstoppable tonight favor is coming upon somebody last year November in Kaduna on Sunday morning around 4am I asked the Lord I said daddy I can't stand to anoint everybody because of my need. What do I do? He said, call out all the Zuna pastors. Anoint them. Kaduna too. So anoint them. And they will go out and anoint the congregation. And what I could have done with you, I will do the same through them. Tonight, I will anoint the, the, the senior pastors. Please bear with me. It is not about them. It's about the oil. Are you hearing me? And after they have anointed the people, and we went into prayers, the people went drunk. And I'm expecting that God will do something either similar or above that here tonight. <laughs> I've been praying my clothes and trusting God for you. Because we have entered into the selection process. Where apostles are going to be ordained for specific offices. And these offices, God will demand for them when the fullness of time is come. Amen? Amen. So I want you to go into prayers. I don't know the area that you are trusting God for. I don't know the area you are trusting God for. The Bible says, covet endlessly. God is about to raise captains. Either in the ministry or in the political setting. God is about to raise financial authorities. God is raising men and women in ministry that will turn their city upside down. That will go to nations. That their influence and their affluence will affect nations from this small place. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Put a demand on the oil. 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 On the oil. Your story must change. Your story must change. In the place of your story, it must be glory. Your story must change. God is about to announce somebody. Somebody that will influence and affect his generation. Somebody that will turn his village upside down for God. Somebody that will be seen as a son. I see a man. I see a man lifted up from the dungeon of nothingness to the lamb light of glory. I see a man. I see a nobody 
becoming somebody. I see a nobody to becoming somebody. Open your mouth and talk to God. Let this oil not be like every other oil. You have become a fertile ground for God to manifest His grace. Either in politics, either in governance, either in business, either in ministry, or either in finances, whichever area, whether either in academia. Doors. Unusual doors of divine favor is going to open unto you. Holy Spirit. Libro Sata Mali Prakasata. Yes, my Father, my God. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, the hour has come, and now is the hour. Libro Sataba Lima Ingabora Basatela Prakasato. My father, my father, the shout of Israel, the horsemen thereof, the hour has come. And now is the hour to separate your children. To separate your children. The day of their election has come. Father, behold their voices. Behold their cry. The time for apostleship has come. The mantle for specific function has come. Released upon them. As they cry unto you. Open the doors. David was in the bush when he was made a king. Father, behold your daughter. Behold your son. It does not matter where they are occupying now. Where they will occupy tomorrow matters. Behold their cry. As the oil come upon their life, let there be a promotion. Let there be a promotion. Let there be an expansion. Let favor replace labor in the life of your children. Lima Kuria Rabaka Satapa. Yes, my father. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my God. He that heareth the voice of his servant. Behold my cry on behalf of your children. The hour has come and now is the hour. The hour of promotion. The hour of increase. The hour of manifestation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. And so, Father, I lift up the oil before you. I ask that you take this oil off my hands and replace it with your presence. Let this oil speak your mind over the affairs of your children. In respect of where they occupy now. I see a man lifted up from the dungeon of nothingness to the lamb light of glory. Amen. Let this oil be the oil of their introduction. Amen. Let it be the oil of their announcement. Amen. Announce your people, O oh Lord. Amen. Announce your people, O oh Lord. Amen. In the political scene, announce your people. Amen. In the financial scene, announce your people. Amen. In the academia, announce your people. Amen. In the business circle, announce your people. Amen. My Father, my God, in the ministry, announce your people. Amen. Wherever, oh God, they have desire of you. Father, the hour has come. And now is the hour. 
for the announcement of your children. Amen. By this oil, O Lord, announce them. Amen. Announce them. Amen. Announce them. Amen. Announce them. Amen. Let the sun not set until the announcement is made. In Jesus' name. Let the sun not set until the announcement is made. In Jesus' name. As you announced David in the bush and he became king, so I decree, let the announcement of your daughter let the announcement of your son not let the sun not rest let the sun not set until the announcement is made until the manifestation is put in place this i decree in jesus name every man every woman that have been ordained for announcement those who are given the authority to announce them, may they not hold their peace until they have made the announcement. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, let the oil begin with them. But let it not end with them. Let it affect their household. Let it affect their community. Let it affect their churches. Amen. Let it affect their nation. Amen. Let it affect beyond their nation. Amen. Let this announcement go beyond their nation. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Zona pastors, please. Come along. Follow me. Your mercy will last you. Just like the days when power passes. Your power is the same. I am. Yes, you never see anointing, anointing for me. Your mercies will I see just like the day.
the area pastors and the wives of the zonal pastors and area pastors come forward first i'll anoint you first before we anoint the others when i see
Just lift up your hands into the heavens. Jesus. The hour has come and now is the hour. Wherever you are in this compound, just lift up your hands into the heavens. Jesus. The time of your visitation has come. Be your neighbor's keeper. Be your neighbor's keeper. Jesus. The time of your visitation has come. You yeah, lift up your hand into the heavens and begin to wave it unto the most high God. Give him a wave offering. Give him a wave offering. Give him a wave offering. Be your neighbor's keeper. Be your neighbor's keeper. Be your neighbor's keeper. I've told you already, be your neighbor's keeper. If anybody go down, help the person down. Don't drag the person. Allow him to lie down. Allow him to lie down. Just allow him to lie down. Just allow him to lie down. Just allow him to lie down. Give the Lord a wave offering. Give the Lord a wave offering. Be your neighbor's keeper. Just give the Lord a wave offering. From up, down, outside, everywhere. Give him a wave offering. The time of your visitation has come. Now receive. Now receive. Now receive. Now receive. From the choir section down to the minister session. Now receive. The entire congregation. Now receive. Just put her down. Just put her down. Now receive. The time of your visitation has come. Receive. 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 Be your neighbor's keeper. Receive. 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 The Lord is here Himself with the host of angels. Receive by faith. By faith. Receive. 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 The day of your visitation has come. Holy Ghost. Help her down. Help her down. Lay go both Satan. Lay your hand on your head. Lay your hand, lay your hand on the head. Just lay your hand on his head. Don't be afraid. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Receive. Receive your own. 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 The day of your visitation has come. The Holy Ghost. The Lord is repairing foundations. The Lord is repairing foundations. Receive your own. Thank you, Jesus. 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 In the next five minutes, help her, help her. Just lay your hand on her. Lay your hand on her. Just lay your hand on her head. Where are the pastors? Help me. Limbro sata mali brakasata. Limbu soto mali brakasata po. Holy Ghost, glorify Jesus, glorify Jesus, glorify Jesus. Ma ma bakarabo satala prakasate. In the next five minutes, the power of God is going to sweep through the congregation. Receive your own. 
receive your own. The election of the saints is about to happen. Receive your own into that office, into that position that God is electing you into. God is appointing apostles, prophets into places of authority. Receive your own apostles in the financial world, in the business world, in the political world. Receive your own in the academia. Receive your own unusual wisdom. Unusual wisdom to manifest his glory in the midst of his people. Lift up your hand for the second time. Lift up your hand for the second time. Give him a wave offering. He's a miracle God. Jesus. Jesus. He's a pillar of fire. Now receive. He's a pillar of cloud. Now receive. Now receive. Now receive. Jesus. Receive. He's a pillar of fire. Receive. He's a pillar of fire. From upstairs everywhere. Receive your own. Receive. Receive. That expectation. Receive it now. He's a miracle. Jesus. He's a pillar of fire. You can never want to Thank you, Jesus. He's a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Can we be silent for a minute? Dear Holy Spirit, glorify Jesus. Dear Holy Spirit, glorify Jesus. Glorify Jesus. Dear Holy Spirit, glorify Jesus. Those outside, those inside, receive a touch. Receive a touch. Let the fire come down. 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 Receive a touch. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Receive your own now. Receive, receive. By faith, receive your own now. From the back to the front, receive your own. Upstairs, the gallery there, receive your own. Receive your own. Dear Holy Spirit, glorify Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Tell her to sit down.
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bring out your thanksgiving offerings so that I can pray over you. After the thanksgiving offering, there shall be another wave of the move of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, thank you. Choir, give us a song. How do you carry out your thanksgiving? Do you go around? Okay. So can I drop mine out? Wopuli wome luwe Wopuli wome luwe Wopuli For your God. Celebrate, 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 celebrate. He has given us victory. We will lift him I are Jehovah. We will lift him He has given us victory. We will lift him We will lift him up. I am a Jehovah. The Lord has given us victory. I am a Jehovah. The Lord has given us victory. I am a Jehovah. 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 I am a Leave 
activate If you call love He go promote you Drama go bless you Drama don't lift you Drama don't promote you Drama don't bless you Drama don't favor you Drama go lift you Drama, 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 drama,
anointing with the anointing that you have re received 
the, re the days of rejoicing will continue. The Lord will give you reasons to continue to rejoice. Reasons to continue to praise him. The anointing will bring uncommon and unusual favor your way. We will see your manifestation. The world will hear about you. Jesus shall be glorified in your life. Testimonies will meet testimonies. Breakthroughs will meet breakthroughs. Money will meet money. And you will lend to nations. You will not borrow. By the power of the favor that has been released through this anointing tonight, you will do exploits for the Lord. So shall it be. Go in this thy might. Go in this thy might. Go in this thy might. And manifest the glory of the Lord. God bless you. All the pastors, I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, all pastors. Thank you, all those who contributed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Go out fishing on Friday. Go out fishing on Friday. Go out fishing on Friday. Let's go and manifest this power that we have received. God bless you. See you on Friday. <laughs>